Next, we're going to hear from Connor Connor Cullen. Uh, he grew up in the suburbs of Chicago. He moved here to pursue a degree in cultural studies, assuming it was actually studying culture. And he soon realized it was something much more and ultimately fell in love with the major. His writing is focused on topics from bike lane safety and critical mass culture to researching alternative food networks in urban communities. He hopes to find work dealing with those sorts of issues, hopefully through the Chicago Park District. His paper is titled, The New Rules for Radicals, Illinois Perg, and the Shift to Social Media Advocacy. Uh, this draws on a year-long internship to analyze Illinois Perg, or the Public Interest Research Group, and its transition from high-risk to low-risk high low activism, placing this shift in the larger context of an emergent high-tech culture. This paper synthesizes his experience at, at Perg, scholarship informing its approach, and a cultural studies inflected analysis of direct action and emergent social media activism to highlight the potential pitfalls of Illinois' Perg's transitions uh, from high-risk grassroots organizing to low-risk social media networking. Thank you. Illinois PERG is a statewide nonprofit advocacy group. PERG stands for Public Interest Research Group. Uh, they have multiple campaigns that they work on in order to better the lives of the public uh, citizen. The group was founded in the 70s, one of its co-founders actually being Ralph Nader. It was not based in Illinois, but soon expanded across the country and now has many locations. They are always, there are always new campaigns they bring onto the program after a previous one has been completed. Some past campaigns that I've heard about were initiatives such as bringing about the ban of smoking indoors in Chicago. A few that they were working on while I was there were stopping the pollution of Lake Michigan, stopping the overuse of antibiotics on factory farms, and the campaign I was actually working on was to get big money out of politics, specifically overturning the Supreme Court decision of Citizens United. They've traditionally gone about winning their campaigns through these grass grassroots methods. Uh, at the base, they're the canvassers. These are the people who go out on the streets and go uh, to communities knocking from door to door. Canvases are out there to inform and educate public about the causes they are working on and how it, affect, how it affects everyone and their livelihood. Along with that, they also try to raise money in order to keep the campaigns going so they can uh, make change and continue to educate the public. Um, many actually view this as intrusive and what it all boils down to is uh, us actually asking money from the people that we meet. Um, most people don't even answer their door, especially when we are canvassing before a uh, majority of the workforce clocks out. And Perg believes that the best thing to do at this point is to leave literature at these doors. And from what I've seen, most of it end up in the garbage. And I actually don't know why Perg continues this practice, especially being a sister organization of Environment Illinois. Um, uh, going up from there, uh, there are offices where I was actually situated at when I got into my actual internship after I uh, had been doing canvassing for a few months. Um, one of my main tasks was actually to compose and send out letters to editors of newspapers. Uh, there were goals set in order to get a certain amount of media hits, and the reason for these letters was to get word out to the public in as many ways as we could, in order for them to know about the issues at hand and to get them talking about it. This was just another way for us uh, to start from the bottom to work our way up in order to reform elected officials who could actually make this sort of change happen. Um, and so our goals were, are eventually to get these elected officials to a side on our campaign and so they can enact these policies that PERG uh, thinks would be beneficial to the public. Um, we actually do this by composing emails that have all the information uh, about our campaign to all these officials. And one of my tasks that I went about uh, was every single day I would go and research uh, eventually towards the end it was about thousands of different elected officials and organizations out there and I would compose their emails, their name, their title, their phone number and I would just put it into a giant Word or Excel program that just extended on forever. Um, um, so if we're uh, if we we're able to get all this information and then the superiors will hear of it and decide to join us as well Perg also researches local organizations' um, interests in our campaign. So it's not just elected officials, it's these organizations that are somewhat tied to ours. And that they don't always have to be, um, but we're just trying to gather as much support as we possibly can. Um, and so 
the thing is, uh, a lot of things with the, the canvassers are, is there is just a high number of turnover. Um, I can't even remember how many people I saw Kim come in and out of our doors for canvassing soon to quit because of how intensive it was or because they did not meet the quota. Uh, I struggle over whether this is a good or bad practice. On the one hand, it gives a lot of people the opportunity to make a change while earning money. On the other hand, it seems like such an odd practice for a company like this to easily let people go, not to mention the rep repetitive monotony of the directors. We were given a wrap of what we were to say at the door and have to memorize it. In order to do this every single day, the directors will have us practice it for at least an hour before we go out. Uh, it can drive a person insane. Um, <laughs> so o over time, I became more aware of how the campaign functioned. I feel like it has not progressed incredibly far since the beginning. Um, when I started, I was really pumped, thinking I would be setting out to rallies in public forums, trying to win people over and elected officials. And there was really only one occasion where I did leave the office, and I realized just how much preliminary work there was to be done. Almost every week, there needed to be more content information of someone or somewhere else uh, to be found and organized. Um, and a lot of that, I feel, was not even used in the end. Um, and one, so one major thing I would actually do different would be to put more uh, active community work in. And sure, the canvassers are out there educating the public, but I did not hear of anyone uh, going to where an elected official was speaking to ask questions. There was just ultimately really no follow through. And so, in order to have a fuller understanding of these practices and their effectiveness, there needs to be an incorporation, an incorporation of theory. The, the, the theoretical frameworks below uh, were chosen because I think they help clarify the methodologies of Illinois PERG. They will give insight into the workings of an organization like this, and then will be deconstructed in order to show the effectiveness uh, or ineffectiveness of their style of activism. Um, so one of my uh, supervisors recommended Saul Alinsky, uh, specifically Rules for Radicals. And I think it was, this was helpful. It gave me an idea in ways in which you can organize from a very well-known social advocate. It helped me push to really look at the issues at hand and drive campaigns and how to go about it because of the personal experience involved in the work. Because during my internship, I definitely was dealt many monotonous tasks that I've already gone on to explain. And Alinsky gives more hope when I first started to do these tasks, especially when he says, quote, a bit of blurred vision of a better world. Much of an organizer's daily work is detail, repetitive and deadly in its monotony. In the totality of things, he's engaged in one small bit. It is as though, in, as an artist, he is painting a tiny leaf. It is ine inevitably that sooner or later he will react with, what am I doing spending my whole life just painting one little leaf? To hell with it, I quit. What keeps him going is a blurred vision of a great mural where other artists, organizers, are painting their bits and each piece is essential to the total." End quote. Uh, Alinsky is someone whom my supervisor believes to be a great activist and his analogy gives hope. At the same time though, when there is a system in place such as PERG with this high turnover, people are not dreaming of that mural. Uh, when bonds and personal connections are formed between the people working, there is a common strive for the goal. When these connections and the communication that comes with it aren't there, the mural ends up a mess. Alinsky explains his 12 rules that the radicals should follow in his book. Um, the two that stuck out to me were, was number seven and number eight. Um, uh, number seven being, quote, a tactic that drags on too long becomes a drag, end quote. Um, while it is definitely something to strive for, it was not something Perg was trying to follow. The letters to the editors of newspapers dragged on for the whole year I was interning, and most likely way longer than that. The eighth rule is, quote, keep the pressure on, never let up, end quote. This one really hit Perg's weakness twofold. Alinsky goes to explain how with this pressure, new tactics need to be deployed in order to really push the opposition off balance, something Perg did not go about doing, being so set in their ways. Every day, the fight consisted of letters to the editors and trying to uh, sign on local elected officials or organizations. There was rarely a change in that. Also, while interning there, I saw Perg bounce between other campaigns and even side uh, issues pertinent in Illinois and Chicago. They were clearly letting up at certain instances and not putting the pressure on um, at all times on their main campaign. Um, 
One of my next sources that I used uh, to help analyze Illinois Prairie and how they made strides in work that started the whole organization, Ralph Nader and Donald Ross actually wrote Action for a Change, a student manual for public interest organizing. Um, this actually goes about their, um, their start of how they organized a lot of students across different campuses in order to eventually bring on um, uh, people who knew more about like professional activists. They wanted to raise as much money as they can for these prof professional activists. And um, this actually, uh, I was able to apply what a lot of they wrote about in order to further my understanding of PERG. And the main thing I was able to take away of the breakdown of how to actually go about going to support from public interest and these research, research groups, hence public interest research group. Um, along with this, there needs to be an analysis of uh, policy and how there needs to be more of a political reasoning behind a campaign in a cultural studies sense. This is where the work of Deborah Stone and her work, Policy Paradox, The Art of Political Decision Making. This gave me a new perspective, maybe even one that I have not had through cultural studies, as to how to approach these issues at hand. She really goes about deconstructing policy making. While she does not give specifics of how these policies work in a large scale setting, her guidelines are sound and help compare to and understand Perk's framework. I think the most important one being that I came across was efficiency because of Perk's lack thereof. Um, she writes about the goals, problems, and solutions that occur in the Marcus and the Polis, or the individual and the community, and one major aspect of it is that there's, there's always going to be a paradox that occurs in policy and making an analysis. Um, transitioning into my next section, uh, I use David Graeber, who compiles, compiles multiple essays drawing from politics and art that show the downfall of capitalism in, uh, is coming, and we can play a role in seeing as there is no other way. This book, Revolutions in Reverse, helped me attain a better understanding of modern intellectuals who analyze political activism. Graeber states uh, in part of his essay that, quote, it is quite possible that we are heading for a revolutionary moment, or perhaps a series of them but we no longer have any clear idea of what that might even mean. This essay, then, is the product of a sustained effort to try to rethink terms like realism, imagination, alienation, bureaucracy, and revolution itself. It's born of some six years of involvement with the alternative globalization movement, and particularly with its most radical anarchist direct action-oriented elements." End quote. Well, it will be diffi difficult to go over much of this essay, considering each section is highly important, this was mainly used for a base for me to personally understand political activism and its relation to, to PERG and what I saw happening there, or again, a lack thereof. Um, now, then Stephen Duncombe in his book, Dream, Reimagining Progressive Politics in an Age of Fantasy, gave me a modern understanding of activism or rebellion. This moves past intellectual analysis activism to actually making a stance. This uses video games as an example of spectacle in which is capable of giving a message such as a need for a change to a larger audience. Um, quote, it may seem naive to suggest that a model employed by fringe protest groups are embedded within video games could be adopted by massive organizations like Sierra Club, not to mention a behemoth like the Democratic Party, but recent progressive initiatives like moveon.org show the promise of moving these practices into mass politics, end quote. And this is just an idea of a way in which the people are effectively pursuing activism in different ways. Um, so this final section that I want to transition to actually is going on to analyze Illinois PERG and its tradition from the high-risk activism to low-risk activism because of this tradition of our society into a high-tech culture. Uh, it draws on my own experience at PERG and from cultural studies look on activism. Uh, those areas of knowledge along with additional sources are presented to highlight how Illinois PERG is transitioning along with society into that high-tech culture. Uh, and in doing so, practices and methodologies will do one of two things. They will be stagnant, remaining in tradition, and falling behind popular culture, or they'll transition to keep up in this high-tech era, but ult ultimately switch from high-risk to low-risk activism. Um, I draw again on David, five minutes, okay. Um, so I draw on David Graeber uh, again. Uh, he states that, quote, one thing is clear that, that since this period, the 1960s, the American media has become more than any other industrial democracy I'm aware of, extremely reluctant re to report on activist stunts of any sort, even demonstrations, end quote. Um, 
And so since the media outlets of America are so reluctant, many people turn to social media in order to become informed of these high-risk issues. Perg tries to use social media in order to educate the public, which is something very, very beneficial. However, they do so in such a way that is ineffective because of the way they present it in its low-risk form. They do such things as post pictures on Facebook of people holding up signs that briefly mention their desire for some form of change. So much of the social media coverage of these meaningful ideological battles is highly political and more empathetically draining than the less intense campaigns Perg focuses on, so that they are actually drowned out in the feeds and forums. Um, Malcolm Gladwell's small change, while the revolution will not be tweeted, can help compare forms of activism to that of Perg. I actually first uh, learned of and read this article the day after I was out campaigning with my supervisor in front of polling places for the mayoral election. She had actually been boasting about a few people retweeting um, her incredibly anticlimactic live Twitter feed of said campaigning. And Gladwell's uh, article first highlights a big step in the civil rights movement and how that form of activism is different um, from what most of we see today. Um, I'll skip ahead to uh, his quote. Uh, the kind of activism associated with social media isn't like this at all. The platforms of social media are built about, around weak ties. Twitter is a way of following or being followed by people you may never meet. Uh, Facebook is a tool for efficiently managing your acquaintances, for keeping up with the people you would not otherwise be able to stay, stay, stay in touch with. That's why you can have a thousand friends on Facebook as you never could in real life." End quote. Um, and going on to Clay Shirky's political power of social media, uh, he term, terms, or coins the term slacktivism in that, and which is a lot of what people are doing on the Illinois Perg social media, is they're clicking that one like um, status in order to further feel like they're actually contributing to the campaign. Um, and I will just go on to um, end with uh, Langdon Winner's quote that I believe uh, really sums up a lot of what I'm talking about is that by calling the changes of computerization revolutionary, people tacitly not acknowledge that these changes require reflection. They may even require strong public action to ensure a desirable outcome. Yet the occasion in our society for reflection, debate, and public check are rare indeed. The important decisions are left in private hands inspired by narrowly focused economic motives. While it is widely recognized these decisions have profound cumulative consequence for our common lives, few seem prepared to own up to that. Some observers forecast that the computer revolution will be guided by new wonders in artificial intelligence. Its present course is influenced by something much more familiar, the absent mind.